Welcome back to this week's Trimble Forensics Tech Tip Tuesday. Today we're going to be looking at surfacing in Reveal and how to tackle one of the most challenging diagramming tasks, which is surfacing the intersection of two crowned roadways. Let's start Reveal and get going right after the break. So we have our point cloud loaded up in Trimble Forensics Reveal and we're ready to get started. So I've added my point cloud to a layer called PC for point cloud and we are going to lock that down so that it doesn't move and I'm going to use the virtual total station to do all my line work. So in my measurements I'm going to create a data log and in my log type it's going to be point cloud and I'm just going to put my virtual total station somewhere out of the way and I'm going to call it VTS for virtual total station and I'm going to put it in the VTS layer and once that is open we are set to go so I'll move these items around here so that we can take a look at what we're working with okay so the very first code we're going to use will be EP and we're going to call this EP1 and I'm going to zoom in here to where the edge of the pavement is and I'm going to put my last point right where the pavement seems to curve off. I'm going to skip across to the other side and I'm going to pick out a spot where the pavement seems to rejoin from the curve over. I'm going to put that one here. We'll start EP2 on the other side. So the edge of the pavement starts right here. One more here. And the pavement begins to curve around right around here. So we want to put a point right where the curve starts. We're going to skip straight across and we're going to put a point right about here and so on until we get our edge of pavement 2. Now that we have our EP2, we're going to do EP3, and it's going to be just this curved portion here. So we'll start right down here. It appears that it links up right about here, and I'll just plot my points all the way around. Now one thing I'm not going to do is put another point here. I'm going to rely on this to be my end. So I'll just move right around here to number 4. I'll do the same thing all the way around so I have a point right where my curve starts and I'll keep going all the way around until I almost get to this point here this EP2 so I'll do the same thing for these two curves and then we'll move on now that I have my edge of pavements done. If I take my point cloud and I turn it off, we can see now that we have our basic outline for our four-way intersection, but we're not quite done yet. We need to put in our center lines. So I'm going to code this as center line one. I'm going to turn my point cloud back on. And our east and west road was our main thoroughfare. This was a two-lane paved county highway. The north and south road was a two-lane paved county road. So the highway is going to take precedence here so we're going to start with our highway i'm going to put another center line right about where our curves start put my other center line here and here i'll take my center line two and i'll run my center line two up to the point where it's about going to intersect here and i'll skip across and i'll put one right about here and here and that should be just about everything that we need to put in our surfacing so now that I'm done with my virtual total station, I'm going to move over to my construction layer and I'm going to lock my virtual total station. Well, not quite yet. I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to hide my point cloud. Now we're all set to do the automatic generation of our line work. So in my virtual total station log, in my actions, I'm going to connect to points with common codes with the line, and that's going to do most of my line work for me. There are a couple of other things that we need to do, though. With our curved lines here, what we need to do is we need to extend these out. So I'm going to add a point to my end. Now I need to put it on this point, so I need to snap it here. However, I'm unable to when I'm adding a vertex. So what I'll do is I will click somewhere out here in space, turn on my point snap and I will drag my point over. So I'll do the same thing for my other three lines.
Now that I have that done, I need to make these curved. So I'm going to select each one of my combo lines and I'm going to go through once I have them selected in my actions, I'm going to make all points curved. Now that I have that done, the last thing I need to do is I need to match up our lines with our center lines. So what I will do is I will take these combi lines and in my actions, I'm going to insert a vertex. I'm going to place that one there. Do the same thing for the other line. I'm going to insert a vertex. The last thing I need to do is drag it over to that point. Make sure that it follows my line work. And we are all set to do our surfacing. So I'm going to make my surfaces layer active. And first thing I'm going to do is surface the major highway lines. So I select the edge of the lane line and the center line. My actions, I'm going to create a surface. And it creates a bow tie here because I went down and back. So I'm going to reverse the series. And I'm going to give this an asphalt 4 texture. I'm going to do the same thing here for my center line. And the north edge, create the surface and give it an asphalt 4 texture. Now the last thing I need to do is surface through here. So I'll select my curved edge of pavement and I'll select my center line. And this one we're going to have a bit of trouble with because it goes straight across. If I try to surface this, it's going to create a bit of a mess here. So what we need to do is we need to break this line. And what we need to do is we need to select the break tool. So in our actions, we select break tool. Ask us break it where you want it. So I believe I'm going to break it right about here. From here, what I'm going to do is trim this thing down so that it ends right at the CL2. So when I select my combo line 23 properties, we have this vertex selected. I'm going to remove it and that trims it back. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. And there we go. Now we're ready to surface these curves. So I'll give this an asphalt 4 texture and do the same thing on this side. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. And now that I have my surfacing done, I just need to make a couple changes here and just change the way that things are tiled to make the texture match just a little better. The next thing I need to do is a little bit of layer cleanup. So I have some combo lines that got out of line here. So I take my combo lines and I select them. I can right click and move it to my construction layer. And this way all of my surfaces are on one layer and all of the other stuff I want to get rid of is on the construction layer. Now when I hide my construction layer and my virtual total station points, I now have my roadway that is fully surfaced. When I turn on my point cloud, I can see it sticking through the surface just a little bit in some areas and in other places it isn't, which means that it's matching up pretty darn well. So now I can turn my point cloud off and I'm ready to put in my vehicles and road lines and have them run along my surface. Now for this example, there isn't a whole lot of topography to worry about. The roads don't have, they've got a little bit of crown to them, but not a whole lot. I found that this method does work well if you've got two very crowned roadways that come together and you need to preserve that crown as it intersects one another. So if you've got this area of the road, if you've got a vehicle that's traveling along and it's got a pretty high amount of roll to it as it's transitioning from one crowned roadway to another, uh, this method of surfacing does preserve that topography and that relationship between the crowned roadway surfaces. As you can see, using the virtual total station makes quick work of this scene, letting us spend less time diagramming and more time analyzing. If you found this tip to be useful, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and if you have any tips that you would like to share or questions about any of the Trimble Forensic solutions, feel free to put them in the comments section below. Stay safe, and I'll see you next week.